Hello everyone, uh, my name is Ima, I'm an anaesthetic SD7 at Queen's Medical Centre in Nottingham, East Williams here. Um, I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about combining a simulation fellowship with an MSc. So the background to this is the Transformation Centre has been integral in uh, designing and planning a new MSc in patient safety and quality improvement, uh, which started last year at the University of Nottingham. And uh, being the simulation fellow, I was pushed quite hard um, to, <laughs> to do this MSc. Um, I had my reservations initially, um, but actually as I got into it, I realised that it was a brilliant way of assisting um, in my simulation fellowship in gaining the competencies I needed for advanced training in anaesthesia. So, re very recently, uh, the Royal College of Anaesthetists, without really dissipating this information, um, have told the TPDs that they're getting quite stringent on what counts as advanced training and what doesn't in anaesthesia. Um, and this has come about in the last nine months or so. And uh, unfortunately, this sort of projects very well. Um, but if you look at uh, the grid I've formed there, the advanced training on anaesthesia, as set out by the curriculum by the Royal College of Anaesthetists, um, breaks it up into four main categories, which is academic and research, improvement science, safe and reliable systems, teaching and learning, and management. And then that's further broken down into whether you're a basic trainee or a higher trainee or an advanced trainee. Uh, now, I don't know if the colours, you can see the colours, but as you can see on the left hand side there, we have the simulation fellowship. And I believe every fellowship is unique, but most of us probably do the same thing over a year, which is a lot of teaching, um, involvement in projects, um, big projects that are going on. I'm talking about one tomorrow. Uh, please come and uh, listen to the Institute Simulation in ITU tomorrow. Um, so that's the big project I was involved in. But it doesn't really <coughs> apply to some of the things that the Royal College of Anesthetists want you to do, which are improvement science. And this is where the MSc comes in. And you can see all that green on the right-hand side, which is all related to improvement science, to leadership, change management, all that kind of stuff comes in from the MSc. And basically, this is just a reflection of how the MSc has meant that my year is going to count uh, towards training, whereas perhaps it might not have done if I hadn't done the MSc. And of course, I'll have an MSc in anesthesia. Um, that counts for quite a lot. It's not like surgery where, um, where everyone has a PhD. So, thumbs up. That's all I have to say. Do we have any questions for Ryan? Did you discuss this with the TPD program directors before this was planned? Were they on board with this as an idea? Yeah, absolutely. Good question. So, so the MSc is being done part time over two to four years. So I managed to do all the core modules, all the optional modules in one year, which is quite difficult. You have to work hard because it's 24 face to face days, a lot of assignments, and so on and so forth. But having managed to do that, um, what it does mean is the TPD now <laughs> has no real option not to sign you off for a year's worth of training. Um, and the Royal College uh, you know, will accept that as a use of training. How it used to work in previous years was, uh, prospectively, the college would allow you to do a SIM fellowship and say that will count towards a year of training. Just in the last six months, the goalposts seem to have changed. And now we see that the Royal College is getting really stringent and saying, well, from this day to this day, what competencies did you achieve in your advanced training to count towards advanced training in your simulation fellowship? Thank you very much. Any other questions? Thank you very much, man.